What's going on guys? It's Byron here from uh, ETA Wheels and we're continuing on our studio setup. Check out the new light back there. Let me know what you think. I've added another string of lights over there. Let me show you what this looks like with the lights off. And while I got you here, actually before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and change the shutter speed down to a 1 over 50 so you guys can see that cool cinematic effect, right? Kill this light. Looks pretty cool, huh? We're getting there slowly but surely. We're still waiting on another light to arrive, but that's okay. I figured I'd go ahead and show you that now. Looks pretty neat. I like it anyway. So we're here to talk today I'm filming you right now on the Sony ZV-1, and the, we're, we're gonna talk just real quick about the focal length on this camera. So this is a 24 to 70 millimeter focal length. And the problem with that is, we're filming in 4K, 24 frames per second, and I've got the stabilization in the camera turned on. So we're going to talk about one of the drawbacks to this camera. When, when you have it set that way, all right, um, it crops in. So if I were to turn the stabilization off or film in 1080, um, you would see a much wider angle. But everybody's filming in 4K. 4K is just kind of the way that we're going now. So I got this. This is the... Ulanzi WL1. This is a wide angle lens for this camera right here, the Sony ZV-1. So pay attention to this footage. I'm going to switch you off. We're going to jump over on the A7C and we're going to open this bad boy up and uh, we're going to walk you through how to install it on your Sony ZV-1. And then we're going to film some footage afterwards and you guys are probably going to see a pretty big difference so we'll be back alrighty guys so we're back and just in case you guys haven't seen one in the flesh this is a Sony ZV-1 and I'll be right back alrighty guys I apologize about that had a quick little phone call I had to deal with so we are going to show you the Ulanzi WL1. This is fresh off the Amazon delivery truck. We're gonna go ahead and open this bad boy up. Now, who should be considering this? Um, just about anybody who is doing some research on this particular camera setup, the ZV-1, you've probably heard some of the vloggers talk about it. You've probably heard some of the people mention about the crop on 4K when it when you're filming on 4K and how they wished for a wider field of view. So I'm showing you right now, the, the camera that you're on right now is my Sony a7C and you are on the 17 millimeter um, perspective. I guess you would look at that, think of it that way. This is a 17 to 28, all right? So I've got you set on 17 millimeter for a little bit of a wider angle. Filming on 4K, 24 frames per second. Cine 2 color profile. So you're not going to notice a difference between the color profile because I have this one set the same. But what I want you to notice is the focal length, right? So now I'm sitting back here comfortably. I've got a little bit of a weird... The Canadian spider arms. Anyway. Let's show you what you get in the box, shall we? So this is what you get in the box. Get a nice little lens cap. Check that out. This is aluminum. This is not plastic. This is very well made. This is very well machined. I am very impressed with this. So now, see if you can see what this is going to do, right? This is the macro lens. Yes, this lens has two functions. 
This will allow you to shoot macro and wide angle. Now you're probably, if, if you're new to cameras, you're probably asking yourself, what's macro? Well, I'm just gonna explain it simply. Macro photography means close. Now pay attention, right? I'm at the minimum focal distance, and as you can see, I'm not exactly in focus, right? My fingers are not in focus. Maybe you're tired of looking at my fingers. Let's go with this cool Tamron lens cap. In focus. Kinda, sorta, but not quite in focus because this is inside the minimum focal length, right? So now, this is the macro side. So we're going to show you what that looks like. So I'm out of focus even back here, but yet here I am basically, I'd say we are within in less than an inch from the lens of the camera. And yet here I am perfectly in focus. Pretty cool, right? So that's what a macro does. So a macro just means close. That's it. So for you guys that are getting new to, you know, photography, videography, a macro lens is essentially one that will simply take a photo very close. Um, quick uses off the top of my head for the macro portion. If you are a car guy and you are into car detailing, you're going to want to show off your paint correction skills. The macro lens will get you close enough to show off the detail that you want to highlight to your potential customers. Now this is a very nice machined aluminum cap back here. Now let's see what both of them together look like. See how it in increases the perspective just a little bit? Now I'm not moving my position, but yet you can see more of the image. That's all we're doing, guys. We're just making the camera a little bit wider. Now, obviously, I don't need it on the, Z, on the um, A7C. But on the ZV-1, there are a lot of circumstances that I've been in. For example, when I'm filming in my car, where a wider perspective would just really help me get what I'm trying to um, film across. So. There is a little instruction manual that comes with it. It looks like it's in English and uh, I'm assuming Chinese. All right. Contrary to what people will tell you, real men read the instructions. All right. Please read this product manual carefully. Keep this product manual, always include this product manual when passing the products on to third parties. So if you sell it, it's nice to have the instruction manual. All right, so the weight of this lens is 133 grams. There we go. It packs up very nicely. So this, this can go just like this in your camera bag. It's not gonna get knocked around, it's not gonna get scratched up. Why is knowing the weight important? Well, if you're shopping around for one of these, you're, you may be potentially shopping around for a small um, gimbal to support this. So I'm gonna go and get my scale and we're gonna take some weights. We'll be back. Alrighty guys, so this is not exactly the most precise um, scientific measurement. This is just, you know, we're just checking it out. So I'm gonna give it to you in, you know what? I'm gonna have to remove this because it's not gonna zero out. It has to sit level to zero out, so. We'll do that. All right. Yeah. 
All right, so we're gonna do this in pounds and ounces first for my fellow Americans. And then we're gonna do this in metric for literally everybody else in the entire world. So this is 4.9 ounces. And that's with the lens cap and the back cap on. All right, now we've converted it over to literally the rest of the world's. And we're at 139 grams. Okay, I'm just checking to make sure that I can lay this flat. So without the lens caps, this is going to add 118 grams to your camera. Now for those who are curious, a Sony ZV-1 with the battery and an SD card inserted. Oh, come on, get on there, you. There we go. I know it's kind of makes a annoying sound, but that's actually the sound of quality, believe it or not. All right, so the weight of the camera, for those who are wondering, is 292 grams. Let me just change that over to bald eagles. That would be 10.3 ounces for y'all Americans. All right, so camera and the lens together is just under one pound. Why is that important? That's important because if you're shopping for a gyro, uh, I'm not a gyro, but if you're shopping for a gimbal, okay? If you're shopping for a gimbal, you're gonna to wanna to look at the weight capacity of the gimbal. So that, again, that's 15.1 ounces, so that's just a tick under a pound. Now for everybody else in the world, that is 429 grams. All right. So <clears throat> if you're looking for a gimbal you're gonna want at least a one kilogram capacity on your gimbal. Personally, what I recommend is that if you're going to buy a gimbal, buy one with a, a higher load capacity because maybe you've got a full frame camera that you wanna to run too. Then it'll do both of your cameras. Bonus, if you upgrade later, you level up your, uh, your game as they say, you're gonna to wanna to get something with a higher load capacity. So it makes more sense before you spend your money to know what you need and then know where you wanna go, right? So for example, this A7C is about a pound without the lens and it's about a pound, the lens itself is about a pound. So that's about two pounds. So that's about a kilogram. If you get one with um, two kilo capacity, you're golden. You can do either camera, you can upgrade, you can change your lenses, you can do all of that cool stuff, and you don't ever have to worry about burning out your motors prematurely. Continuing on, application process, right? So this is supposed to have your macro lens, which I've already shown you, your wide angle lens, which I've already shown you, an adapter ring and a lens cover, which I've already shown you, but we're gonna show you the adapter ring. Some of the things you need to be aware of before you do this, this is a permanent modification, okay? So if you're considering doing this, you need to keep that in mind. Um, what's neat is that they do give you additional um, stickers for this ring. So should you flub it up, you just have to peel it off a little isopropyl alcohol, and you can use a new ring, all right? So you've got five tries total, because there's one already there. You've got five tries to get this right, so no pressure. Comes with a little uh, microfiber lens cloth, and personally, what I recommend before you do this, open up your camera, and I'm gonna grab my little lens cleaner here. 
and we're going to do a wet and dry cleaning just real quick just to make sure that there's nothing on the lens so you're not getting any distortion right and for those of you who buy these um, green clean kits if you store these inside a Ziploc bag they're not going to dry out so quickly and you can kind of reuse them important if you're thrifty I'm thrifty it's me I'm thrifty Obviously, it doesn't matter if you store the dry one in the Ziploc bag. I just do so that I know where they are. All right, so we're getting this all cleaned up nice and pretty. That way, there's no chance that there's that when I put this on and show it to you, I'm going to get embarrassed. Hopefully. I mean, I might still get embarrassed. We don't know. Now, Sony took a lot of things into consideration when they made this and they designed this for vloggers. And in my opinion, this is a very remarkable camera. It really, really is. It takes amazing stills and it takes really good video, especially when you consider the price point and the size. So for you guys that are looking out there, you know, to, to start your journey, this is an excellent choice to do that. So why did I upgrade to a full frame? Well, because there's some things that a full frame camera can do that this can't, and I want both. There's a lot of times I'm gonna use this. In fact, I'm mostly gonna be using this for most of my videos going forward. There's sometimes it's great to just grab a lightweight camera and just go. So if I'm on the road or I'm gonna do an interview with somebody, I'm probably gonna grab this bad boy right here and that one, but I'm gonna have this one on the tripod and I'll have this one set up off to the side. Then I've got two good cameras shooting the same picture profile, the same quality. <sighs> All right, so the directions don't really tell you to do this. I'm gonna use the microfiber to clean off where this is going to attach. And then I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna pause this for just a moment. I'm gonna grab a little Q-tip, I'm gonna soak it in isopropyl alcohol, and I'm gonna wipe this with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to ensure that we get the best possible adhesion. Before we do any of that, we wanna check and make sure the threads are good, the threads are clean, make sure that we don't have to do any additional work to this thing before we install it. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is that you can take this part off, but this will always be on your camera. Okay? That's why I'm saying this is a permanent modification. So think before you just knee jerk react. Do you need it? Can you get away with putting your camera farther away to get that perspective that you're looking for? In my case, no, I can't. Um, what you're looking at is literally my dining room table. Okay? And this is just over arm's length away right now on my 17 millimeter A7C. So it's gonna look approximately like this when it's installed on the camera, right? This is still quite portable. You can still take this and put this very easily into a small compact camera bag. You can remove it and put this into your bigger bag, but this will always be on your camera, okay? So now I'm gonna try to do this the best that I can. I'm just lining it up to show you, before, obviously we're not gonna stick it yet, but that's about what it's gonna look like. Hopefully you guys can see that, there you go. That's what it's gonna look like all the time from here on out. That's what it looks like without. That's what it's going to look like with it installed. Now you're going to want to get this perfectly centered when you do this. Understand that once you apply pressure, this 3M adhesive is going to stick like hell. So you're going to want to make sure of a couple of things before you do this. Number one, that you don't have any grease or dirt 
or anything that will affect the adhesion of this onto here. And two, what you're going to do is line it up without touching the adhesive to the surface. And you're going to get that as perfect as you can and then you're going to press down. And then after you press down, you're going to keep pressure on it with one hand, run your finger around it like so, just to put an even pressure. Now, the thing that I haven't seen anybody discuss in any of the YouTube videos is the cure time for this particular adhesive. So, we're going to look this up. Now, this is using 3M9448 Alpha. 3M9448 Alpha Cure Time. This is something that you just want to check, right? So it will be at 50% of its ultimate strength after 20 minutes. So for the YouTube vloggers that are out there slapping this on and then just going and doing their little test review, don't pay attention to those guys. And I'm telling you this because they're not doing it right. Okay, I'm not saying I'm an expert. I'm an aviation guy. I like to know these things. So what do you really need to know? Before you go stabbing this thing in your camera bag, this is not gonna be at maximum adhesion after three days. It's gonna be at 50% adhesion after 20 minutes. So once you stick it, it's not done, okay? So when I install this, I'm gonna, install, I'm gonna wipe it with isopropyl alcohol, and I'm gonna show you all of this. And we're going to install it, and then I'm going to go ahead and stop recording, and I'm going to come back in about 25, 30 minutes, and we're going to continue. So that's going to bring this adhesion to 50% strength. At that point, I'm going to install the lens. And at that point, we're just going to do a quick test, and you guys are going to see the difference. Um, it should, if I've done my math correct, come out somewhere between 17 and 20 millimeter focal length. So that's going to give it a perfect wide angle, exactly what I want to achieve here in my studio. It'll make it perfect for when I'm in the car. And it'll be very, very similar to what you're seeing here. Um, probably with a little bit less spaghetti arming. All right. So I'm going to grab some alcohol and we'll be right back. And we're back. So we're gonna go ahead and just remember, you don't want a super soaked Q-tip here, all right? You're just, you want a little bit damp and you're just going around this metal ring that's on the outside of the camera. And again, this is a pretty damn good camera right out of the box. Nobody's uh, knocking it but I think this is something that's gonna improve my capabilities overall with the camera. All right, so now we're there. I hit it one last time with this microfiber. Dry off any residual alcohol, which could loosen that bond if left alone. Go ahead and peel this ring. I can tell you I've used a lot of this stuff in my life. Um, when I tell you that it, it's, it's gonna stick like hell, I mean it's gonna stick like hell. This is some very aggressively sticky stuff, which is exactly what you want for an application like this. So now, I hope you guys can see this, but you're just gonna line it up like that and then press down, all right? I know I apologize, I'm working on a way to get an overhead view, and hopefully I'm going to have a solution for that um, in the near future as well. So stay tuned. And you're just going to center this up, nice and gentle. You want to try to keep it as equidistant as is possible. It doesn't have to be razor sharp 
perfect, but I am a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to stuff like this because I don't want it to somehow distort. So make sure while you're looking at it, you're looking at it square so that you'll be able to tell that it's the same distance everywhere. And when you have it the same distance everywhere and it's perfectly installed, because this doesn't come with a template or anything, that would be just like way too easy, right? All right. There we go. And we're down. So now we're just gonna keep pressure, run our finger around where the adhesive is. The adhesive is not on the whole disc, by the way. There we go, that's all it takes. It's not exactly perfect, but it's perfect enough, I think. I don't know, you guys tell me. What do you think? I think that's pretty good. So, we're gonna check it now. And I cannot see that adapter anywhere on this frame. That means it's good. And that's actually pretty good. That's, it's off a little. Turn off, come on. There we go. So it's off just a little bit here, but it's not bad. So now we're gonna let this adhesive set. And we'll be back in about 20 minutes. All right, guys, so now we're back. Check it out. Now it's nice. It's at 50% strength, okay? It's actually been about 30 minutes. Show you what that looks like. All right. Turn off. This is probably one of my biggest complaints about this camera. It's kind of slow to turn on and off. So who do I see using this? Um, I see a lot of people using this. If you're always shooting at a, folk, uh, a, a fixed focal length, for example, um, you probably won't need this, but if you're somebody who's looking just to add a little bit of additional capability, well, there we go. I'd say that's solid. Then this is probably for you. So now what I want to know is, is the motor going to struggle with this? And it doesn't. Easily comes right out. Wow. Nope. Don't mind my battery door. <laughs> yeah, that's embarrassing. All right, that's one of the downsides to a small camera, guys. Wow. Okay, so this is the macro. And we're gonna take that off. And what we want to be left with there's a wide angle. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, no. My bad, I apologize. That is the macro. <laughs> yes, it is. And just to show you, to illustrate, that's how close it is, all right? And I'm getting a crystal clear image on this. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you. So now what I wanna know do I need to have both lenses installed? Or can I just run one or the other? Well, let's find out, shall we? This is the wide angle. And yes, okay. So you either have both lenses installed or you got squat. Good to know. So if you guys are wondering, now you know. Now you know the answer. So let's go ahead.
All right. Well, that's a pretty nice difference. Now, come on. There we go. Now, I'm telling you it's a pretty nice difference. But what do I know? Let's show you, shall we? Here we go. So you can kind of see the um, difference. I'm holding them about the same level and about, yeah. Um, obviously, this camera is going to be a little bit sharper than this one. Uh, but what I will do is I'll go from this footage directly to this footage, and then we're going to go back to that. Alrighty, guys. So now here we are back on the ZV-1. And um, do you notice the difference? I bet you do. A little bit wider. A little bit taller. Distortion's not so bad. In fact, I think if you're doing tabletop, this is actually a perfect perspective. So we are at f1.8, 1 over 50 shutter speed, on the wide angle lens, and um, this is pretty awesome. I know you're like, ah, oh, he's crazy. I don't see that big of a difference. Well, let's check it out, shall we? Don't mind my hand. Notice the difference now? Thought so. So as you can see, you can just now see the bottom of the shelf. This is with the 4K crop that comes with the Sony ZV-1. There's nothing you can do about it if you're filming with active shot. Now, if I turn the active shot off, uh, or the steady shot, don't mind me, guys. There we go. See that? Isn't that cool? Now you can see all my cool stuff in the background. Check this out. We're going to do this because I want you to see, not because I actually forgot to turn these on, but because I just want to show you what it looks like at an f1.8. Pretty neat, huh? There we go. Remember when I said we'll come back to that footage in a little bit? Now check out the background. Right? We're still at a f1.8. So, that's pretty dang cool. And this is actually about the perfect perspective. Now, compare this to the 17 millimeter uh, on the Sony a7C. And I'm going to show you, because I'm going to take a little clip right now. Not just now, but right now. So I'm going to be the same effective distance. And I'm going to go... I don't know how to do one clip over the other yet. I haven't figured that out on my editing, but I'm going to try. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do this. So you can see me placing the camera about visually where that would be. So here we go. So you can kind of see the um, difference. I'm holding them about the same level and about, yeah. Um, obviously this camera is gonna be a little bit sharper than this one. Um, but what I will do is I'll go from this footage directly to this footage and then we're gonna go back to that. cheesy YouTube cut. That's actually just so I have a pretty good visual indicator of where I need to cut in and out. Kind of cool. Anyway, so this is the Lonzi wide angle lens and um, I really like it. And I know this is going to sound like a weird statement, but this thing is really cool visually on the um, camera. And so I, th I think it's actually Kind of cool. Snap a quick pick here. And I'll uh, throw this into the video. You looking at me, looking at you. All right. So now I've got that, and I'm going to throw that into this video. So let's check out the macro side, shall we? 
And to do that, you're just going to break the lens in half, not literally physically. But I, w I want you to pay attention because even with my hand here, if you notice, it's catching the eye out of focus. See, my face is coming back into focus a little bit. I mean, it's mostly focused on my hand because that's what's right in front of the camera. But it is kind of cool to see that. Almost there. There we go. This is a very fine thread. Now, you're not going to be able to focus on me because this is the macro lens. So, woo! I'm going to show you what that looks like. We're going to start out about here, which was relatively close to the focal distance. And we're just going to bring you in slow. So now here we are approximately three inches from the lens. And here we are approximately a half an inch from the lens. And if you notice, we're still in focus, right? Pretty neat. I know there's a weird blurry guy talking to you right now. So we'll just go ahead and pop this back in. Yeah, these are fine threads for those of you who are curious. Now, if you're doing something where you're gonna quickly switch from one to the other, you don't have to thread the lens all the way in, um, as you guys can see, because it focuses just fine. But, safety and security, there we go. So now, let's zoom you in to just a slight, okay, now we're at f2.8, so, this is a more better replication of what this camera does. Um, this would be approximately a 24. And then, oopsie, we're into the digital zoom. All right, so this is 70 millimeter with the wide angle. Obviously, you're not gonna wanna spend too much time there. Right, here's about a 24 millimeter, so this was pretty close to what we were looking at before. And then this is all the way wide, so this is approximately somewhere between a 16 and a 19 millimeter perspective, which I find to be perfect for my needs. Now, your needs may vary. And again, who do I see using this? I see a lot of creators using this. This is a very useful lens. It's a very useful system. And I like the fact that you get an extra lens cap, which is pretty cool because to me, that adds that extra layer between here and the non-replaceable camera lens. So this to me just gives it a nice little perspective. Um, you guys wanna walk outside, check out the balcony? Let's walk outside and check out the balcony. Show you what this looks like outside in the sunlight. I'm not gonna turn the ND filter on, but I'm gonna walk around and vlog with it a little bit so you guys can kind of get an idea what that looks like on this lens. Now, it is gonna be ridiculously bright. I'm not adjusting the camera settings, so deal with it. I just wanna show you what it looks like right out of the box. All right? So, hopefully you can see something. No? Well, let's adjust the shutter speed. There we go. So I'm still at f1.8, but I'm at uh, 10,000 shutter speed just to get your reasonable image quality, just so you can kind of get an idea, right? So let me turn on the ND filter. Pardon me a moment. So now we can bring this down a little. Let me slow down the shutter speed a little bit. And I'm doing this live. I'm not going to edit this in any way because I really want you guys to see what it's like. Okay, we're a little overexposed. Still fairly overexposed. All right, well, I'm just going to leave it at 10,000 then. But this is with the ND filter turned on. Got to get an idea. See how much more of the landscape is in the shot here. 
This is arm's length, 4K, with stabilization. And I'm going to take you off. And here's the same image, 4K, changed nothing, same 1 over 10,000 shutter speed, f1.8. See a little bit of a difference on the uh, perspective in the background, right? Cool, let's put you back. See? A little bit of a difference. And now, what this allows me to do, so it, I, I'm six foot four, so I've got pretty long arms, and I'm able to get a decent perspective with this thing. But maybe you guys aren't, right? Maybe you're a little bit shorter. So I'm able to bring you in, comfortably hold you here, right? Pretty cool, huh? Let's go back inside. It's hot. You guys are going to partially black out here, and I apologize. We're going to adjust these settings. Take the shutter speed back down to 1 over 50. And there you are. Now, for those of you who are curious about the background image, right? We'll set you right back exactly where you were. You see how you can see Miss Virginia Beach over, the, over there? We're gonna zoom you in to approximately where we were before. There we go. So we were approximately here before. Actually, right about there. Anyway, I'm gonna run you back out now. So you guys can kind of have a little bit of an idea there. The reason we went outside is so I can show you how much more of the environment you're gonna see with this, um, this wide angle lens. And for me, this is phenomenal. This is how I feel this ZV-1 should have come right out of the box. I feel that you should have been able to have this perspective right out of the box without anything, right? So tell me what you think. Let me, down on, let me know um, down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. All right, so this is Byron from ETA Wheels, and y'all have a great rest of your day.